kid you not, it is almost 11 a.m. and still super dark outside. Now at six, a bird's eye view over an apocalyptic looking San Francisco, how people are processing the orange haze and midday darkness. And we are tracing the source of the smoke that's transformed Bay Area skies and why it looks so much worse than years past. When they inhale particles, small particles that can lodge deep in the lung, like wildfire smoke particles, that can cause more airway inflammation. And dealing with the new health risks of a long wildfire season. That's what we have. Good evening. I'm Ken Bastida. And I'm Elizabeth Cook. Our top story, the Mars-like day we've all been talking about. A live look at the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. It's like a photo filter was placed over our camera. And this, like a scene from a doomsday movie. But it is very real. A drone shot overlooking downtown San Francisco, where at midday the skyline turned to a creepy orange color. Videos and photos flooding social media of people's just disbelief as they capture a very unusual smoke-filled day. Some even wondering, what's next for 2020? Well, we have team coverage today on why this phenomenon is happening. We're beginning with KPIX 5's Kit Doe, who is in San Francisco. Kit. Yes, we're coming to you live here from Grizzly Peak Boulevard. This is in the uh, Berkeley Hills. And uh, on any other normal day, you'd be able to see all the way into the Bay, Alcatraz, Bay Bridge, Golden Gate. But uh, this is not any normal day. As one person said, it looked apocalyptic. And even though it was a strange day, those of us who live here have to go on about our day. Mars, eat your heart out. It looks like hell. I would describe it looks like hell. Smoke high up in the atmosphere altered the sunlight and cast much of the Bay Area in a real life Instagram filter. It stretched as far south as Palo Alto, where Debbie Doherty said the dish hiking trail looked more like a sepia tone photo. This is one of the strangest years ever by any measure. And hopefully ne this time next year we're looking back and things are a little brighter. At Highway 101 and Poplar Avenue, it was so dark, construction crews had to break out lights to finish up their work. And speaking of darkness, nearly everyone we spoke with said they woke up this morning thinking they had more time to sleep in because it was so dark. This is North Beach at 8 a.m. And if you thought that was dark, check out Monterey Heights in San Francisco at 11 a.m. So we made it to San Mateo, and it looks like the skies got even darker and more smoky. It looks like this might be dusk, but check this out. This is 1215 right now. Longtime resident Nick Alafuzos says he needed a headlamp to hammer in some nails this morning. How does this make you feel about 2020? Oh, uh, like I was just having lunch with a buddy. He goes, yeah, now we're all waiting for an earthquake to happen. Well, Kit, is the smoke uh, settling any lower uh, right now where you are? I see a, a little inversion layer uh, over your shoulder there. Yeah, you know, it looks like uh, we've got some uh, marine layer creeping in here, but I can tell you in the past two hours or so, we haven't seen as much ash, but certainly it has gotten significantly smokier. So whatever is going on weather-wise, uh, they were saying that it was going to get smoky. It looks like it's happening. It's like a primal ooze coming up over your shoulder there through the trees. <laughs> Kit Doe reporting live. All right, Kit, thanks a lot. A drive through San Francisco's Pacific Heights neighborhood at 9 this morning. It was uh, a little confusing waking up to this stuff. Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagan joins us now to explain why the orangish color, but not really any smoke smell. What's going on? Yeah, we'll get to the color in a second. Let's deal with the smell. It has to do with where the fires are producing smoke, where the smoke is coming from. Now it's thick everywhere, but the fires around the Bay Area are approaching containment. So the fire icons here on the map indicate the hot spots as observed by the weather satellites. We'll zoom out for a wider look here and you can see where the fires are still raging right now. The August complex, the North complex, including the Bear Fire uh, and also the Creek Fire in the Sierra and then those fires in Oregon. All that is being transferred transported down towards us, but it's higher up in the atmosphere because they're farther away, so we don't smell it. But it's a thicker layer of smoke compared to what we saw when the fires were local, so it's being filtered by more of those particles in the atmosphere. The sunlight, what we usually see as just light, is made up of every stripe of the rainbow. You see it as a rainbow when it's filtered through raindrops, but now it's being filtered through those smoke particles, and it's more likely to be scattered, to be dispersed in the blue and violet wavelengths of the visible spectrum. So all that makes it through 
are the red and orange ends of the spectrum. It's really just a pronounced uh, factor when you see it coming up in the morning or when it's going down. So there's just more atmosphere you're looking through, more of that stuff in the atmosphere that is just straining out the sunlight. Not only dims it, but it also affects what the hue is overhead. So that's why we're seeing the orange and red as opposed to any other stripe of the rainbow. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll talk about whether this is going to improve at all over the next several days. All right, Paul, thanks. Let's talk about the ash falling from the sky. KPI X5's Kenny Choi says that's actually not your biggest health concern. Kenny? Yeah, Liz, it's that uh, fine particulate matter. That's the concern uh, for air quality issues. It's been uh, quite something in San Francisco over the last couple of weeks. But for health experts, they say that there are short-term and long-term effects when the air gets bad. The bigger particles of ash blanketing cars are not the biggest health concern. When we talk about particulate matter that's like 10 microns or larger, we can inhale those, but they can only go part way down our respiratory system. More reason to wear a face mask, I suppose. Hopefully that's helping. The orange ominous skies can be deceiving. Believe it or not, currently we're seeing sort of moderate to good air quality down at ground level uh, throughout the Bay Area, except for isolated pockets. When the finer particulate matter triggers air quality sensors to register high AQI numbers, the short term health effects arise. There can be very acute um, impacts, including sudden cardiac death. Research also shows an uptick in asthma attacks and increases in pneumonia cases, but the long term effects aren't quite as clear. Firefighters who are exposed to, you know, wildfire smoke their entire career, they do have increases in certain types of cancer. People with pre existing heart and lung disease are the ones at most risk. An air quality index of 50 or below means good air. When it's 100 or more, it's no longer safe for sensitive groups, including pregnant women, children, seniors, and people with respiratory conditions like asthma. When they inhale particles, small particles that can lodge deep in the lung, like wildfire smoke particles, that can cause more airway inflammation. And it's that increased inflammation that can lead to more serious issues for people who are higher risk. We also talked to doctors who say that people infected already with coronavirus while breathing in that bad air can lead to more severe COVID-19 cases. We're live in San Francisco in Pacific Heights. Kenny Choi, KPIX5. The Creek Fire in Fresno County is one of many fires contributing to our smoky skies. It has exploded to an area five times the size of San Francisco. Firefighters worked in steep terrain, hoping to save the tiny town of Shaver Lake. To our north, the Bear Fire gained strength while 50 mile per hour winds howled through Plumas and Butte counties. Thousands have been evacuated. The fire is 250,000 acres and is 38% contained. Well, let's take a live look at SFO right now, where it's looking uh, uh, a little better than it has all day long. You see the sky is lightening up a little bit. KPI X5's Wilson Walker on the tourists who are flying here for sun, getting an orange surprise instead. Wilson? Yeah, Ken, uh, airport operations not affected by this blanket of smoke, but for anyone flying into the Bay Area today, what an incredible way to experience this remarkable event. Well, everything was normal until we started it getting close orange. to home and everything turned bright orange. The relatively few passengers who made their way through SFO today all have a story and probably a few pictures to share. Well, it's just uh, as we were taxiing in right after we landed on our way in from Seattle. Marion Weiler was taking pictures all the way home. He says he was not prepared for the end of the flight. As we were coming down, uh, you know, probably up over North Bay or something, you started descending into this and uh, you knew immediately just the whole plane, kind of the light inside the cabin turned kind of this yellowish red and it got really dark like at night. It was unbelievable. We were above the clouds when we started descending into SFO. We hit a layer of really bad smoke. Pilot even apologized over the intercom for how much smoke was getting into the plane. Just about everyone we spoke with was making their way back home this afternoon, but no one was expecting just how dramatic things would look when they got here. That's what I've heard. My husband said, welcome to Mars. We've been in the Bay Area for uh, about uh, going on 40 years, and we've never seen it like this. Just unreal. This is unprecedented. 
All right, I talked to a couple workers here at the airport who had spent most of their shift inside, did not have windows, and they came out the sort of late afternoon hours and were just flabbergasted by what they saw. You know, it can be disorienting. I, I felt like the late morning hours were a little, a little odd today when it should have been getting brighter and it felt like it was actually getting darker. Those folks came out and were stunned at what they saw out here. So wild day all around. We are live here at SFO, Wilson Walker, KPIX 5. Wild day indeed. We're still ahead on KPIX 5 and CBSN Bay Area. I miss the old neighborhood, but I welcome the new neighbors. A September evening they will never forget. The San Bruno pipeline explosion still taking a toll 10 years later. Hey everybody, I'm Dennis O'Donnell. 49ers get some great news on the star linebacker ahead of Sunday's NFL opener and just how Kyle Shanahan hopes to create a home field advantage despite no fans at Levi Stadium. That's coming up. It's been 10 years since the deadly San Bruno pipeline explosion. The devastating blast took the lives of eight people and destroyed dozens of homes. KPIX 5's Lim Ramirez covered the explosion when it happened and returned to the neighborhood today. Well, 10 years after the San Bruno explosion, an ominous fire orange cloud hangs over the city once again. But the former mayor says that that should not obscure the human toll that was taken that day. Plus the positive changes that have happened in this community since that tragedy. Life has moved on in San Bruno, but for neighbors like Jesus Quintos, who lived through the pipeline explosion and stayed through the rebuilding, today is for remembrance and reverence for the neighbors who were lost. That's something I miss, just waving back at each other. It was just after 6 p.m. on September 9th, 2010, when a PG&E gas main ruptured and blew up in the Crestmore neighborhood near Skyline Boulevard. The blast and fire took the lives of eight people, destroyed 38 homes, and badly damaged many more. All of a sudden, the house just shook. Carolyn and Charlie Gray lived up the street from the explosion and barely escaped before their house burned to the ground. The fire came up, uh, somebody said, a thousand feet in the air. It could have happened in your city. It could have happened in, in someone else's city. It could be your mother, your grandmother, your child. Former San Bruno Mayor Jim Ruane says much of the aftermath attention focused on PG&E. Defective welds were blamed for the pipeline rupture, and several lawsuits resulted in over a billion dollars in fines. But Ruane says he would always try to refocus on the victims. It's more than financial viability uh, that caused this. It's, it's people lost their lives. PG&E eventually paid a $70 million settlement with San Bruno that is paying for a new aquatic center, scholarships, and a memorial park where a new touchscreen display is set up telling the story of the explosion. The total change one because there was three houses here and now there's a, a park. A park to enjoy, but with bittersweet feelings for some. I miss the old neighborhood, but I welcome the new neighbors. In San Bruno, Len Ramitas, KPIX 5. Well, back on the eerie skies today, you saw them right there midday in Lenny's package. The orange so bleak that many people just couldn't help but take out their phones, capture the phenomenon. Alan Martin joins us right now with a look at what viewers have captured, Alan. Yeah, Ken, let's begin with a tweet from the A's president, Dave Cavill, showing a crazy orange sky standing out above the green field at Oakland Coliseum. This taken just before 11 this morning. Orange Sky also fittingly spotted over Oracle Park. The Giants playing a little later tonight. Tam High School in Mill Valley posting this picture of an eerie morning in Mill Valley. Another shot shows a yellowish Fremont and the Great Highway looking a lot like Mars, people say. This is about noon today. Has been kind of a weird day. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagan with when we can expect some clear skies once again. Well, that's the million dollar question. I want bright blue skies overhead with no smoke in the atmosphere, but I'm going to be disappointed along with everybody else for the next several days. The upper level winds way up in the atmosphere, tens of thousands of feet up, still sending that smoke from north to south, even though the winds at ground level have shifted around a little bit to allow the marine layer to sneak back in. So we are dealing with kind of a layer cake effect in the atmosphere. It gets complicated. So we head into the weekend. The whole 
big picture pattern is going to rearrange itself and maybe allow for some of the smoke in the upper levels of the atmosphere to be pushed farther away. It's still going to be a factor in the forecast through at least the middle of next week. But at that point, this storm system still way out in the Pacific over the weekend is going to be closer to the coast. And that could be the larger scale feature we need to kind of bulldoze the bulk of the smoke out of here. Fingers crossed. This is one of the experimental forecast models. It just focuses on wildfire smoke, nothing else. This goes from 11 o'clock tonight through 11 a.m. on Friday. The purple shaded areas indicate the thickest smoke, but the red and orange is bad enough. Let's put it in motion, show you how it's going to evolve, and you see that thick smoke that's still overhead is still going to be overhead as we head through most of the day tomorrow. So another day of substantially below average temperatures. A lot of that is farther up in the atmosphere, so the surface air quality isn't as bad as you would expect. But it's still far from great. The worst air quality tomorrow is going to be in the North Bay, inland in the East Bay, and then the Santa Clara Valley, farther away from the bay, farther from the coast and that marine influence, which is a factor for us. It's kind of jumbling together with the fog and the smoke right now. That fog dropping closer to ground level. Temperature only stands at 59 degrees downtown. There's Oracle Park lit up in the spooky orange glow. Other temperatures are only in the 60s, and that fog is going to spread inland as we head into tonight. Usually, as the atmosphere warms up, the fog backs up. I don't think that's going to be the case as much tomorrow because the sun's not going to be able to penetrate the smoke and help the fog to lift and dissipate. So temperatures start off in the 50s to around 60 degrees. We might be a few degrees warmer than today. We're in the 60s across the board, but I think the warm spots on the map tomorrow are only going to reach up into the low 80s. And even that might be an overestimate. Once again, there is a lot of uncertainty in the temperature forecast for tomorrow, but the smoke is the big thing and that's going to be with us for at least a couple more days. Temperatures will gradually return to the mid 80s inland as we head into the weekend, upper 60s around the bay and low to mid 60s near the coast. But that smoke has produced just the eerie glow that you see in the monitor over my shoulder and it's going to be another day like this tomorrow. Ugh. All right, Paul, thank you. Well, let's get right to Dennis O'Donnell now. A lot happening in the sports world. Yeah, we'll start off with the NFL. Well, why not, Ken? Liz, uh, the 49ers will kick off their season on Sunday against Arizona. <laughs> if playing without fans isn't hard enough, how about playing football through orange smoke? I feel like I'm in the book of Eli. It's like an apocalyptic state out there. But um, surprisingly, the air quality doesn't seem as bad as it looks. So with the air deemed good enough, it was business as usual for the 49ers. Linebacker Fred Warner back after nine days on the COVID list. He is cleared to play on Sunday. And while there won't be any fans at Levi Stadium, Kyle Shanahan is hoping for a home field advantage by not letting the Cardinals know how many decibels the pipe in crowd noise will actually be. I think it's consensus for the whole league. I believe it's 70 to 75. Um, so we're going to decide on those two. We'll keep it a secret for some reason so they don't play with the right decibels the whole week, but we'll see if that's an advantage for us. We'll surprise them on Sunday. Baseball now. The air quality is good enough for the Giants and Mariners to play in about 30 minutes from now. A's and Astros just underway at the Oakland Coliseum. And the Giants going to have some more smoke at Oracle Park as in former All-Star first baseman Justin Smoke. Signed for the stretch run after he was released by the Brew Crew. Smoke has struggled at the plate this season, but averaged 28 home runs the previous three seasons. U.S. Open tennis, Serena Williams pushed to the third set for the third straight match, but she overcame the slow start again, won nine of the final 11 games to beat. Svetlana Perunkova. Now two wins away from a record 24th Grand Slam. Serena will play Elise Bertens tomorrow in the semifinals. And her shot of the day goes to Roy Abendroth from his deck into the neighbor's backyard. Nothing but net. Check out the form. Roy was a record setting shot putter back in the day at Lowell High School. It's clear Roy is the star athlete in the Abendroth family as you guys know <laughs> that was amazing Liz, his brother john is the uh golf analyst here on channel five heck of a golfer can't play basketball uh, worth a lick okay. <laughs> well apparently everybody has their gifts in that family thanks dennis yeah. we just needed to i don't know to take it in still ahead she's expressing what a lot of us are feeling what she felt she had to do after seeing the orange glow.
Coming up on the CBS Evening News, a determined young woman follows in her family's footsteps to become one of the first female Eagle Scouts. We've got that and more tonight on the CBS Evening News. You know, Liz, we found out today there is life on Mars, mm. and it's all of us here on Earth. I always right knew you were an alien, so yeah. you know, it kind of works. There you go. <laughs> Well, feel, feelings of awe and amazement from the orange haze. One woman took her drone up to Coit Tower to capture the incredible event. It is the most surreal moment of my life, so I just couldn't focus on anything else. Well, Coit Tower looking quite stark against the orange sky. Pretty amazing. Remember this day for a long time. We'll be right back. Well, thank you for watching tonight at 6 o'clock. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll be back here on the KPIX 5 News at 7. We'll see you then.